Yes, good morning, everybody. Um, we are live here from TU Delft. We are from the GROW project office, and today we are the GROW studio. Um, we are having a webinar for you today. Um, and uh, my name is Roel Kamerling, and I'm here with Caroline Coleman. And both of us are from the GROW project office. Um, we will talk for a few minutes now so that everybody can get in. Um, and um, well, we started at 10 o'clock sharp. And that's maybe for some of you the first experience with the Dutch culture. Um, we like time. So when it's 10 o'clock, we will start at 10 o'clock or we aim for that. Um, and uh, now more and more people are coming in. So uh, let's take a minute to. Um, uh, talk a bit about where, what we're going to do today um, and how you can engage with us. Um, because there's a couple of things that we would like to do with you. Um, so after the introduction of a couple of minutes now, we will start with a movie. We recorded uh, some in introductions and instructions from uh, the chairman of GROW. Um, so Caroline and I both, we have uh, two more instructions uh, on what it is to become a GROW Fellow uh, or how to become a GROW Fellow. But we also have one of our current PhD students here in the Netherlands at, um, at the TU Delft uh, working on a similar project as what we foresee to be here uh, to become part of the GROW program. So uh, we asked her a couple of questions to share her experience and what it's like here uh, in the Netherlands uh, and to do your research with other disciplines. So she will share a bit about that. So you get a better impression of um, what we are looking for and, and what it's like to do so. And then uh, we have also the uh, Q&A and chat today. Uh, so these are two options to ask questions. Uh, we will disregard the chat. So it's fine if you type something there, but we're not going to address that. We were gonna, we're going to do everything via the Q&A option that, uh, that's in this webinar. Uh, and we have one of our colleagues moderating uh, the questions. And she will share with us uh, the most often asked questions. And we will do that after the instruction. So we can imagine that uh, after the movie, uh, you will have questions. Um, we have received already, already a couple of them via email. Um, and we know that many of you are already working on an application. Uh, so it's great to see that. And um, if questions come up, you can address them to us now in this webinar, uh, or you can uh, view the webinar later online. Uh, and see the questions that we address in there. Uh, or what you can do um, is send in a question now during the movie or after the movie, and we will deal with those. So um, I guess for now, we're just gonna start the, the introduction and the movie. Um, so gonna switch now. Um, always when you're from a university of technology there's always some pressure that that the technology must go right so i'm going to start in the movie now hey listeners and viewers of this webinar from around the world let me welcome you to the grow community my name is nick van and next to being a professor in water management at the tu delft in the netherlands i also have the privilege of chairing the grow steering committee we have worked very hard with the team to get our ideas translated in the project call, and we are very happy to finally launch the application portal. We can recruit candidates for 51 PhD positions, and that is truly amazing. With GROW, we aim to support and strengthen graduate research on worldwide challenges, hence GROW, specifically related to the African continent. We believe that addressing these challenges with new approaches will benefit us all globally. We see that the UN Sustainable Development Goals are complex in nature and therefore need to be addressed with the support of science and graduate research. Science can help in understanding the challenges within their context at a much deeper level. Also, science can help 
in the development and testing of possible solutions so that we can understand the effects of the interventions better. To do so effectively, scientists must engage in interaction with other disciplines, other actors, and across borders. Within GROW, we call this interdisciplinary, intersectoral, and international approach the triple I philosophy, and we invite you to take part in this with us. Working according to this approach in your PhD project can be challenging. The GROW community aims to support you with peers, skills development, and a triple I network. We are building upon the Dutch African scientific community, infrastructure, and experiences. Together, we work specifically on research and innovation to push the sustainable development goals in an African setting forward. You will now learn more about what the selection process will look like and what it will be like to be selected and start working in one of our institutes in the Netherlands. Good luck, and we are looking forward to getting to know you. Uh, my name is Ruth Nelson, and I'm South African. I grew up in a small town in South Africa called Bramstown, after which I uh, studied a, ma a master's in architecture and bachelor's in architecture in a town called Port Elizabeth. I worked as an architect for a couple of years in Cape Town, a beautiful city in South Africa, after which I was really fortunate to get the opportunity to study a second master's degree at the University College London in something called Space Syntax. Uh, which essentially taught me a set of techniques to incorporate evidence into the design process um, and to analyze urban spaces to inform policy design. And this essentially got me into spatial data science. I, after completing this, I worked for a year and a half in Mexico as a consultant um, alongside municipalities, helping them to develop their spatial development plans. And this led me to apply to do a PhD here at TU Delft at the Center for Urban Science and Policy. So I started my PhD research in 2021 with the Center for Urban Science and Policy at the Faculty of Technology, Policy and Management here at TU Delft, of course, and it's on urban inequalities. Inequalities have traditionally been conceived as an economic issue, an economic problem, uh, really, a lot of research has been done into income inequalities, wealth inequalities, um, using metrics such as the Gini index. But the purpose of sort of my research is for us to further our understanding of urban inequalities beyond income and wealth uh, across other dimensions, such as housing, for example, levels of home ownership across urban systems, whether or not people have access to social housing, enough social housing. Transportation is another dimension. Is there safe, uh, affordable, reliable transport for uh, serving different populations in cities? Digital sort of inequalities, how that interacts with uh, urban systems, cities. And I really study this uh, from three lenses. The first is through accessibility. So looking at who has access to which resources in cities. The second sort of lens is a distribution lens. So looking at how resources and infrastructure are distributed across cities, but also um, states, provinces, whole countries, and then finally policy. What is the relationship between urban inequalities and policy? And all of this research really aims to contribute towards SDG 10 and 11, which is reducing inequalities between and within countries, as well as creating more sustainable and inclusive cities. Hi all, my name is Caroline Kolman, and I'm working as a project manager in the Innovation Impact Center at Delft University of Technology. I am involved in the project management of the GROW program and a member of the GROW office team. My passion is to contribute to the development of people. Once selected in the GROW program, you do not only benefit from the opportunities of the GROW program, you will also become an employee of one of the Dutch five, uh, of one of the five Dutch universities involved, and you also become a Marie Sklodowska Curie Fellow, since GROW is a program funded under this action. I will inform you about uh, the Marie Curie program in general, the admission criteria for the GROW program, and the steps which will follow once you will be selected. Uh, Marie Sklodowska Curie actions are the EU's 
uh, European Union's flagship instrument to support mobility, training and career development of researchers. There are five types of actions targeting different objectives. They are indicated on the sheet and more information can be found on the website indicated. GROW is a co-fund doctoral program. The aim is to offer research training activities to allow you to develop and broaden your skills and competences, and it will lead to the award of a doctoral degree. Marie Sklodowska Curie supports uh, uh, mobility of researchers between countries, sectors, and disciplines to acquire new knowledge, skills, and competences, and to broaden career perspective of researchers. The actions are open to all domains of research and innovation and encourage international cooperation to set up strategic collaborations. Our institutes adhere to the principles of the European Charter and Code uh, and provide excellent working and employment conditions. Uh, we provide effective supervision and adequate mentoring and career guidance. This contributes to creating a supportive environment for you as a researcher. Well, there is a focus on interdisciplinarity, intersectoral and international collaboration in the program. And we adhere to the principles of open science and responsible research and innovation. Uh, GROW is a granted Horizon Europe Marie Sklodowska Curie co-fund doctoral program offering tomorrow's leaders a unique opportunity to do high quality and novel research related to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals on the African continent. We received funding uh, of 6.8 million euros to host 51 PhD positions of 48 months each in the period from uh, well, next year until 2028. The PhDs will be recruited in one call and uh, well, our institutes endorse the principles of gender and diversity equality and the program aims for 50-50 uh, gender balance. Uh, and uh, well, there are five uh, high ranked uh, Dutch universities will host the fellows. Uh, then I will tell you now something more about the eligibility criteria. Researchers of all nationalities and countries of origin can apply unless national, international or European legislation or embargoes prohibit specific countries of origin. You must comply with the Marie Curie mobility rule, which means that you must not have resided or carried out your main activity in the Netherlands for more than 12 months in the past three years prior to the call deadline. Uh, which is uh, the sort of end of January. Uh, compulsory national service, a short stay such as holidays and time spent as part of a procedure for obtaining a refugee status are not taken into account. Uh, documentation providing evidence must be included if this is the case. And exceptions are assessed on a case by case basis. You must have completed a university degree that entitles you to embark on a doctoral program in the Netherlands. And the degree must be dated less than 10 years prior to the call deadline. There are some extension windows in case of uh, pregnancies or parental leave, uh, training for medical specialists uh, and compulsory and reserve uh, military service and also for refugees. And documentation uh, providing evidence must be included within the application if uh, one of the exemptions uh, applies. Uh, you do not already work on uh, and do not hold a doctoral degree yet. You are not already permanently employed by one of the implementing partners and you are expected to work exclusively for the project which means that no other funding projects can be carried out on a full-time basis. Uh, a part-time appointment is only possible uh, in case of duly justified reasons and provided that you can finish your PhD within the runtime of the GROW project. Uh, and another criteria is that there 
must be a strong connection with and motivation for the African continent, as explained by my uh, colleague Rule before. Doing a PhD in the Netherlands requires English proficiency at a professional level, both verbally and in scientific writing, to ensure that you are able to communicate and interact well that you can participate in English taught uh, doctoral education courses and are able to write and successfully defend your dissertation in English. Uh, in order to formally register you as a PhD candidate and admit you to the graduate school, your academic qualifications need to be verified. Uh, eligibility for a residence and working permit is condition for concluding an employment contract. And your host institute will apply uh, for the uh, for this at the IND on your behalf. And the IND is the Dutch Immigration and Naturalization Services. The outcome, well, and once the, the selection is completed, the outcome uh, is expected in May next year. We will share this with you and your supervisor. Uh, the HR department of the institute involved will make you an appointment offer, including your empo employment conditions. And after your acceptance, there will follow further exchange of documents related to the, to the English language certificate and verification of academic qualification, etc., which is needed to conclude your employment contract. And after the start of your employment, you will draft a research and training plan together with your supervisor. And I will tell more about these elements in the next sheets. Within 12 or 18 months ago, no-go meeting is scheduled. During this meeting, the supervisory team will inform you of their expectations concerning the successful completion of the doctoral program within a reasonable period of time. You will be assessed against the background of the objective of your employment co contract, your PhD plan, and your report on your work. Uh, based on this, there will be decided whether the doctoral program will proceed, uh, that's the go, or will be terminated, the no-go. Well, and in case of a go, uh, well, you will continue uh, your research, which will result in a doctoral degree in the end. And in case of a no-go, uh, then the doctoral program will end and employment will be terminated. Uh, at the start of your research project, you will make a research plan together with your supervisor. The GROW office will uh, provide a template for this, and it must contain at least uh, the following elements. Uh, of course, uh, your research topic, uh, some arrangements on supervision, who is your daily supervisor, uh, names of uh, your uh, advisory team. Uh, it should contain some doctoral education planning, data management plan, uh, a paragraph on the ethical features of the project. Uh, ethics is a very important issue on which I will provide some more information on the next sheet. And we will prepare further information for fellows who will be appointed. Uh, a first draft of the mobility plan, including the content and conference options, which can be updated later. And you prepare a budget for research, travel, conference visits, training, and open access publishing. Uh, well, with the research ethics or moral principles are important, and PhDs will be requested to uphold the research ethics outlined in the European Code of Conduct for Research Integrity. There's no funding for activities which are prohibited in EU member states. And activities must have an exclusive focus on civil applications. Some research is prohibited, for example, related to human cloning and creation of human embryos, etc. And as part of the research plan, PhDs must complete a research ethics checklist. It's kind of self-assessment. And an ethics mentor is available for guidance in this ethics process. And all institutes involved have mature and robust ethics procedures and committees in place. As a GROW PhD student, you will benefit from the high quality training programs offered by the graduate schools. 
The graduate schools offer compulsory courses and include discipline-specific, transferable and personal development skills. The GROW program will also offer specific courses in collaboration with its partners to train you in interdisciplinary, intersectoral and Africa-oriented work during the GROW training days, which will take place twice per year. And the events will also facilitate networking among other, among other PhDs and a wider GROW network of partners and peers from other universities and disciplines. The GROW project office will facilitate peer-to-peer -peer coaching sessions to support each other to support each other in the typically demanding PhD project experiences. Employment conditions and remuneration will be according to the collective labor agreement of the Dutch universities, guaranteeing full social security, which includes paid sickness and parental leave, unemployment and pension benefits, holiday allowance and an end of year bonus, and same benefits as all other university employees. Part of the collective labor agreement is a quite tight compensation scheme, which results in a salary according to the table on the sheet. The amounts are the gross salaries per month uh, at this moment. And keep in mind that around 30% of this amount has to be paid to the tax authority. But there are also tax exemption rules for foreigners, and this will be considered on a case by case basis. Since GROW is a European Union funded project, we are expected to report to the funding authority. And from the start of your activities, you will be requested to provide us with documents we need for reporting purposes. You also have to inform us of events and circumstances that likely affect your fellowship. It is not allowed to carry out educational research activities outside your Marie Curie research project. You are expected to participate in the GROW events, to publish open access and to ensure visibility and recognition of EU funding in your communication activities. More detailed information will follow once you are appointed. Well, starting a PhD can be a big step, especially if you are coming from abroad. It is a great adventure to move to a new country and also can be quite exciting and challenging. The GROW office and department where you will, where you will have your appointment will support you with all kinds of matters. Many things can only be made after you have arrived. Uh, well, they're indicated on the sheet. Some things will have to be taken care of before your arrival. These include obtaining documents allowing you to enter, to work and establish residency in the Netherlands. You will also have to find a place to live and possibly employment for your partner or school for your children. The human resource departments and international offices have broad experiences with these issues and can help you. And we and our colleagues from the GROW office are also there for you. Uh, well, on this sheet, I uh, put some useful links where you can find a lot of information, of information which I uh, provided. And finally, you will find our contact details here. We hope to have provided already many an answers to your questions. You can contact us for any further procedural questions and we wish you good luck with preparing your application. And as I speak for myself, I hope to meet you in the future. So I think that there are three main ways that we connect our research to the real world. The first is through using real world data within our analyses. There is a lot of open access data now, fortunately, increases in computational power. So our models are based on real world data as opposed to being highly theoretical, abstract mathematical models. The second way that we engage with the real world is actually understanding the real policies which are being enacted on the ground 
so that our research actually, our outputs of our research actually relate to what's happening in the real world in terms of policies and future urban development plans. And then the final way, which is really going to be the next phase within my PhD research, is through direct stakeholder engagement. Um, I plan to do direct stakeholder engagement in Cape Town to understand how we can develop uh, sustainable development solutions for Cape Town, engaging with different policymakers, municipal workers, citizens, looking at kind of current policies that they're implementing and plans that they have, um, testing this with our models and empirical data to see what the future outcomes might be, and engaging with the stakeholders to basically enrich our research and also hopefully help them to make better decisions um, through this interdisciplinary and um, yeah, interdisciplinary research. I think I've had a really wonderful experience being here in the Netherlands. Um, the faculty that, I've, that I am a part of is very open, very inclusive, it's very international too. And I think my experience here has really been shaped by that. Um, I think what is also wonderful is that as a South African, I've been able to bring my own unique experiences, my own unique sort of education. And it's really been a collaborative process where I've brought my specific experiences and knowledge. And then the people that I'm working with, my colleagues, my supervisors, have brought their specific experiences and knowledge. And together, I think we have been able to do really innovative research because of this interesting collaboration. Um, I come from a more sort of social science background. I studied architecture. My supervisors are computer scientists. So it's been this wonderful collaboration as well as intercontinental collaboration. And I think specifically when you're working on sort of big global issues such as urban inequalities or uh, climate change or even AI now I think is a big global issue. It's so important to bring different perspectives and people into the room, people into the room. And I think it really enriches the research. So, you heard about how wonderful participation in the GROW project could be, and I will tell you more on the application process. How to get selected? My name is Roel Kamerling, and I am the project lead of the GROW project office. First, the one and only way of applying is via the GROW application portal. No other routes of application will be eligible to become one of the GROW PhD students. You can reach out to your preferred supervisor for content questions, but I will get there in a minute. You can find the portal at the GROW website. Press the button on top and the portal opens. You can start by entering your email address and every time you leave and come back, you will re-enter the same email address. Upon entering your email, you will receive a verification code in your email box, and you will need to enter this in the portal. Only one application with this email address is valid, and you can submit only one application in total to be eligible. Once in the portal, you can complete all of the questions. The data you enter is automatically saved. You can enter dummy text if you want to get to the next page and return to the previous questions later. Don't forget to do so. If you're completely ready and you want to submit, press the green review button on the last page. Verify all of your entries and then submit. You will receive a confirmation email and from that moment on, you cannot change your data anymore. The Grow Project Office will then do the eligibility check. To understand, to stand a good chance of being selected, it is important to understand the GROW evaluation criteria. First, you are reviewed based on your education or academic excellence profile. This is quite standard for all PhD programs. 
But then we have two other grow criteria that will weigh equally to the first. We want to see and review the vision you have on the emerging needs, opportunities and challenges in the Africa context. Also, what is the leadership role you want to take and have taken so far in making a difference in the Africa context? It's good to mention here that although the focus of the program is on the UN Sustainable Development Goals in Africa, if you bring experience from other low resource settings that are relevant for your project ideas, you are just as eligible. Be very explicit in why you choose your preferred supervisors, as this will be included in the review. You can find all the available supervisors on the GROW website. You can browse, filter, sort and search for the best match for you. And after you click on one profile, more de details will become available. So you select your first and second supervisor of preference. It can be that more co-supervisors appear after your selections. They will operate as a team of supervisors and this still counts as one option. Again, be very specific in your argumentation of your preference. How do these supervisors, their topic, their previous work, their labs, etc., contribute to your project ideas? The review process will take place in several steps. First, we will check the eligibility and completeness of the applications and will inform you ultimately two weeks after the call deadline. Some faults might be corrected by you. Then we will send the best seven candidates per available position for external review. The reviewers will rank these and the top three will be invited for an online interview with the supervisors of choice and again, independent reviewers. Following from these interviews, a ranked top three will be sent to the selection committee who makes the final decision and takes, for instance, the gender balance into account as well. After that, the 51 selected candidates will be invited to engage into the employment contract. And from July 2024, we expect the first PhD students to start. For you to submit the best proposal, please keep in mind what we consider to be ideal candidates. You see some current or former candidates on the left here who we consider to be role models. They all demonstrated already strong education or academic track records before they started at one of their institutes. They knew why they came to pursue a PhD and could share clearly how they want to contribute to the sustainable development goals as leaders on the Africa continent. All of them worked throughout society in their projects with NGOs, companies, civil organizations, hospitals and governments. In their case, they worked from the Netherlands with, among others, Nigeria, Kenya, Ethiopia, Gabon and more. Please be sure to bring across in your application that you can operate in a similar manner with your texts, your evidence, and in your movie clip. If you have any remaining questions, please have a look at the GROW website first, and especially in our guide for applicants, and also in the frequently asked questions that we will update regularly. If any questions remain after this, and they are process oriented, please direct them to the GROW project office. Ask your preferred supervisor any research related questions, or if you have any doubts on whether your master diploma is eligible for a certain research group. But remember that applications run through the portal. Quite some people asked us whether the eligibility criteria, such as the timing of the master diploma, or the mobility rules are completely strict, and please be advised, yes, they are. 
there are a few limited exceptions and they are all mentioned in the guide for applicants. Well, the only thing left for me to share now is that I wish you all the best in filing your application. When you submit is not part of the review process, as long as it is before January 31. So please take your time to create the best proposal you can. And I'm truly looking forward to meeting you. Bye. Well, a PhD is challenging. It's challenging wherever you do it. So you have to be ready for a challenge. It's a four year long process. You're going to be exposed to many new ideas and many new people. Uh, there's going to be a lot of work that you just have to put in. But you do get a lot of support here. That's been my experience at least. I have wonderful supportive colleagues, supervisors, many opportunities to connect with different research communities or res who are researching similar things to myself through conferences. I've been to conferences in the UK, Norway, the US. Um, there are many communities here in general that you can connect with. Uh, at TU Delft, you get a lot of support in terms of any educational development that you might need through doing different courses or uh, different educational resources. Um, so it is a challenge and a PhD will always be a challenge and uh, you might be far from home, but it is a very international and inclusive environment. Uh, that has been my experience. So we are back now with sound as well. Um, and we hope that um, uh, you get the impression that uh, we are really fond of starting this program with all of you. So we are really looking forward to getting to know you and also to help you with make the best proposal that you can. Um, and during the uh, movie, you submitted a lot of questions already, so it's great to see this engagement. Um, we selected already a couple of them, and we will run through them. And um, maybe it's good to start with, so some of you shared really specific uh, cases about your own personal situation. And what we see from many of these questions also being sent via the um, uh, Grow email box, um, is that actually the answers of all of those questions, almost all of them, uh, can be found in the guide for applicants. Um, so please have a look at these first. Um, and if you still have very specific questions then that are not answered in the guide for applicants, please send us an email then and we can have a look at that. But um, most of the answers can be found in the guide for um, uh, for applicants or actually in the instructions that we gave. So we will not go into all these specific cases now uh, that have been raised here, but there are some generic questions that we will dive into now. Um, maybe um, to start, uh, Caroline, could you answer the first question about yeah. uh, the positions based in the Netherlands or in Africa? Yes. Um, well, it, for the for the program, it's it's a requirement to uh, relocate to the Netherlands uh, because you have an appointment at one of the five institutes involved. Um, so that's that's a specific requirement. Um, but uh, there are possibilities to do an internship for longer periods in uh, well, in an African country. So that's. Uh, that's the answer to this question. Yeah, so the home base for the project will be here. Um, but of course, we favor collaboration with the context. So th there will be a lot of interaction, but it's the basis is here in the Netherlands. Uh, then the next question is about, uh, I'm about to submit my master thesis. Am I still eligible? And this is also a very strict set of regulations. Ac actually, you need to have a master program diploma finished at the date of application. So that's 
31 of January, you need to have your master diploma and have been able to upload it into the portal. Um, oh yeah, uh, can you select a particular supervisor even if he or she did not respond to you after contacting him or her that you think is a match? Um, maybe a, a bit about reaching out to a supervisor. Um, so these are all very busy professors, as you probably know and, and are familiar with. Uh, so my recommendation would be, yes, if you have a question to a supervisor, reach out to them. But only if the question is about research or the work that they do, or whether the idea that you have about a project, whether it would be whether it would be feasible to do that in his or her research group. If you have such questions, reach out to the supervisor, that's fine. But be very specific with what you want to do. So, so my suggestion would be, be polite and reach out and say, dear supervisor, uh, I'm considering applying for a GROW position. They know, all know about the GROW program. And I have a very concrete question about doing research in your group. And then make it very concrete and very short and ask your question. So if you send in a lengthy um, email to a professor uh, with also your resume and your application letter, and maybe um, even ask whether you would be a good match with that group. That's not what they uh, are here for now in this phase. So you don't need their commitment. You can, you can apply anyway, whether they reached out to you or not. But if you want to have a question answered by them, be polite and concrete. <laughs> and that's, that's the trick that I'm using myself when I'm reaching out to these professors. We have 120 professors and they all were willing to, to also upload their profiles. They, they put an effort into that. So, so they are really in favor of a program like this. Um, but be very concrete in your questions. That's uh, That would be my suggestion there. And uh, in addition to this, uh, there was there was a question, uh, can you still select a particular supervisor even, well, if you did not contact him or her uh, before, or if, if he or she did not respond to your question? Yes, you can still select that particular supervisor, no problem, but you have to write a good motivation uh, uh, why you think that is a good match with your ideas. Uh, and maybe that also answers the next questions, question about, are you required to have a research topic in mind? Uh, and uh, yes, that's, that's the case. So you need to come in with an idea. I want to work on, I don't know, uh, water management in, in my city in Kenya, uh, or I want to work on, on uh, economic growth in um, Cameroon. Uh, topics like that. So you don't need to have a research project. So th that's something that you will define later after selection together with your supervisor. You're gonna set up the complete research project, but you do need to come in with an idea. And you do need to select a supervisor. It's not that we accept your application and then link you to a supervisor. No, you have to choose a supervisor by yourself and make the case why you want to have this supervisor. Why, why is this such a good match? OK, so a question from a different order. Uh, can we use our official transcript instead of a diploma if it includes the degree awarded and the date awarded? So here I would always say and and. Make make a PDF of your diploma and your transcript and your um, uh, your numbers, um, and and upload one PDF. That makes it uh, as as insightful as possible. 
and connected to that maybe the the CGPA. So this is uh, to to make all of the different um, grade systems comparable by by calculating it into a percentage. So this will need to be a your average rank of our average rate um, on a scale from one to a hundred. So if you if in your system uh, five was excellent and the maximum score, so we calculate your 4.5 to then 90 percent. So that would be how you can can uh, insert your your grades there. Will you do the letter of recommendation? Uh, yes, the letter of recommendation. Uh, there was a question. Uh, well, is it a bit uh, atypical to upload it? Uh, well, myself as applicant. Um, well, yes, we in, in the Dutch culture, it's 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 well, it's normal to be to be open about uh, well, what 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 someone thinks of you and uh, how you how they experience your your work and your well, all your things. So, um, well, that's that's why we choose for this way. Uh, you ask someone to write uh, a recommendation, and you have to upload it yourself. And it's good to see. So, in the application form, there's a couple of suggestions uh, about the recommendation letter. So, it's uh, good to keep those in mind. So, looking at uh, so think about. Who is going to write the application letter for you? Maybe your recommendation. Uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> recommendation letter. So, uh, is this a former professor or is this your employer? Is it someone who can say, say something useful about you that other reviewers will consider to be of value? And then also make explicit why um, uh, why you. Uh, would be a better candidate because of this recommendation. So we also had a question about can I use a previously written uh, application recommendation letter? And yes, that is possible if you have that already. If, if it get, if it gives a good description of you as a person, person, so that it's worthwhile for people to um, uh, to include that in their review of your application. So that's also for you to consider. Maybe as a sidestep here, but so we are really happy to see the level of engagement uh, of all of the interested participants in this program. Um, so we have been working on this for a long time and we are really happy to see that the many people like us have a similar idea of what good research could be. Um, and at the same time, if you're applying now, so there's a there's a lot of competition. So consider that uh, in your application. So if you have already a letter of recommendation, but it's not the best one that you can get for this specific application, then think maybe to ask another one. Uh, you can also make an, um, uh, a PDF with two letters in there. Uh, that's fine as well. Uh, so, but this is for you to consider with all of your steps. Is this the best application that I can send in? Yes, I saw there were some more questions about this and I hope we uh, answered uh, to those questions as well. Okay. Uh, then a um, total other question, the, does the fellowship allow? for one to relocate with their family during the period of study. Uh, well, in principle, uh, yes, that is possible, but uh, the host institutes are not the ones uh, who decide on that because it depends on personal circumstances. It depends on uh, obtaining a residence permit, not only for yourself, but in that case also for your family members. And there are well, some specific rules uh, for uh, where we do not, we make not a decision in that uh, uh, question. Uh, but in principle, it is possible. And we've seen it happening. We've seen it happening before. Um, 
but it depends on on personal circumstances if you have children well they need to go to school uh, there are possibilities for that of course uh, but maybe they need to go to an english uh, school because if you want to relocate uh, well then, then it's good that they still know their own lang language for example um, so it, de it depends on all kinds of circumstances Okay, then I'm going to do the next one about co-supervision co from uh, another party than uh, one of the Dutch universities. And um, so the, 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 the principle is that supervision is being arranged for by the five Dutch universities. You're uh, embedded in these institutes. And this is where you have your, your graduate school and your supervision. But it happens that um, uh, a supervising team from one of the institutes, that they select a collaborating partner, for instance, from an African university as co-supervisor, that happens now and then. Uh, it's not typical, but it happens. And also um, what we see is that within the GROW program, there's an advisory committee. And the advisory committee, they can also include uh, ad, uh, academics from, for instance, African universities or uh, from NGOs or from companies or from government uh, who have some sort of connection with the project and the context. So every, super, uh, every PhD student will have, have such a team. Uh, so that could also be a way to include other scientists in your project. Okay, um, you're just scrolling uh, through all the questions. Um, oh, about the CV um, in the application portal, okay. um, there's no place to upload your CV, that's correct. So this is a specific application portal uh, where we ask specifically for the questions that we want to have answers for. Uh, so you don't need to upload your CV next to that. So if you answer all the questions, then um, uh, we have sufficient information. Uh, I see a question. Are EU students also encouraged, welcome to apply if they match the recruitment criteria? Uh, well, yes, that's the case. Uh, uh, applicants from all uh, countries of origin are uh, well encouraged to supply as long as they meet the, the requirements and have a strong motivation for uh, the research on development, uh, uh, the sustainable development goals, and the motivation and connection uh, with the African continent. So let, let me re-emphasize here that, so we have the three criteria and um, one is about the affinity you have already with the African context. Um, and you are rated equally on all three criteria. So it could be that someone coming from the African continent um, has a stronger case here than if you say only did your master thesis in Africa, but for the rest, you did not have any Africa experience. So it could be that you are rated a bit lower on this criteria point uh, than uh, someone originating from Africa and maybe have been working for a couple of years already in Africa as well. So you would be rated in a different, um, at a different level there. Uh, but still, you could be very well eligible and score on different points higher. So, um, that's how we regard the Africa affinity. Okay, then another question. Uh, well, in a situation where my diploma is not ready, can I submit a provisional master's certificate and official transcript? Well, uh, the requirements are very strict and you really need to, uh, well, have finished and obtained your uh, master uh, diploma before the end of the recruitment, uh, uh, before the recruitment date, which is end of January 2024. 
Uh, and this is a uh, question I really like. Uh, will this program be available again for 2025? I'm asking since I would only obtain my degree next year, so I'm not eligible for 2024. Um, so personally, I must say, I really hope so. Uh, we have really been encouraged by all of your uh, engagements and interactions and, and responses and, and the level of the number of people that, that registered and are now working on an application. And that uh, we really hope to, to be able to raise new calls. Um, but we don't know yet. That's the honest answer. Uh, but we are really encouraged to uh, to work on that. So we would like to do that, and uh, we will just we will have an after meal um, where we will also share the link to this recording, um, and also we will share a link to a LinkedIn group that we have, um, and we can invite you for that so that we can keep you posted as well if new developments are there. Then another question, I'm already working on a project that I would love to implement in Africa. Can I bring this topic to grow for further research development? Well, I think that is possible. Definitely, yes. So it depends on what you mean if you're working on it already. So if you are already working on a PhD to do so, yes, okay. then that's not possible. But if you, for instance, if you are working at an NGO uh, on, I don't know, uh, bringing electricity to uh, uh, suburbs in bigger cities, perfect to bring that into a um, uh, research project. And I see there's a question here about, um, is it okay to select only one supervisor? And yes, that's perfectly fine. It's up to two, but one is fine as well. Okay. Uh, then we see quite a lot of questions about, uh, well, uh, explain a bit more about the strong connection with Africa, uh, with the sustainable development goals on the African continent. Is it enough to have research experiences in Africa, knowledge of the topic in the selected region, despite being totally European and with no personal or family connection with Africa? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I, I can say a few things about it. I, I already explained that a bit, I think, but um, I can understand that this is challenging. So this is all because of what we, so what we have behind us here, so it's um, interdisciplinary, international and intersectoral research. And this is what we believe is necessary to really get a deeper understanding of in complex challenges like uh, the sustainable development goals, but also to to really bring and and develop solutions that can contribute to it. So for that we we believe and we have seen that also with the the ideal candidates that you need to understand the culture and the setting uh, of the, the the place what you want to focus upon. So mm -hmm. so that's really an advantage for people that come from such settings. Um, and as I already said in my instruction move, if, if you come from Bangladesh and talk about water management or something, it can also, uh, you can also bring a lot of understanding and knowledge already. Um, and if you come from more the European context, um, then you have to, uh, to, to bring the case better that you also have an understanding of that or a steep lean learning curve on uh, how to engage into such a, a context-oriented research project. So um, in that regard, it might be ch more challenging for people not coming from Africa or low resource settings to build that argumentation, but it's definitely possible. We've seen that as well uh, so uh, we, we've had at our universities, we've had people from the Netherlands and from Germany or also for Colombia or Belgium doing very uh, interesting and good projects. But it's, um, uh, it's easier to make this case for reviewers if you're coming from, um, uh, from that context. So the, and that, that's the honest answer. I hope I give a bit more clarity on that. Um, on how that works for us. Yes, and uh, 
this does not mean that international applicants or applicants from outside Africa have less uh, chance. No, no, it's definitely not the case. So because and also you have so the, the affinity, the existing affinity with Africa, that's one of the three criteria. So the other one is education excellence or one of the others is uh, the vision on what you believe you want to work on. So, and these are all weighted equally. So you might perform better in one of the others uh, and that counterbalances for, for this experience that you have. Yes, and then there are a lot of, uh, well, questions, uh, more specific questions about uh, individual cases of eligibility. Uh, well, of course, you have to comply with the criteria we uh, indicated and we, which are indicated in the guide of applicants and on the website. Um, but there are some exemptions, eh, because for, for example, uh, parental leave or uh, if you are obtaining a refugee status. Well, and those cases need to be uh, uh, assessed on a case by case basis. So if, if that is the case, if, if you're really have an individual question about these criteria uh, specific uh, for your uh, case, uh, please send them uh, by email and then we will respond to your in individual uh, uh, case. Another nice question here, how much time, how many resources are available for stakeholder involve involvement remotely or on site? Um, and this varies hugely. Uh, so, um, it really depends on the research group that you're in um, and also what is necessary for the project. Um, so we believe that, that the engagement is very important um, and sometimes there's all sorts of remote options for engagement or, or data sets or interviews that can be done also online. There's a lot of options possible now and then. And for other projects, you really need to be in the field for, for a couple of months to, to get all of the information in remote areas, um, collect data points, interviews, or maybe to, to come with your first prototype and talk to people that would need to use it and see if it's possible to, to use it, how they respond to it. So this will take more time. So it's very difficult to answer that um, uh, generically. But this is typically, you can also discuss during the interviews or, and especially after selection, when you're making the project plan. So this is typically part of the project plan. How much uh, time will you spend on uh, stakeholder engagement? But we, we see people that do about 50% of their time. They're doing that um, and others, so for instance, also people working more on the lab uh, in chemistry or in, in mechanical engineering. So they need to build a lot. So they spend more time on making that or doing experiments in the lab. And after that, they gonna, they're gonna invest more in the stakeholder engagement. So it, it typically depends on the type of project that you're working on. And there's still a question, if one can submit more than one recommendation, uh, yes, that is possible, but put them in one PDF file and upload it in the portal. <clears throat> so I think we answered these questions already, but do I need to upload a PhD research proposal? No, no. It's really about an idea that you have. And uh, that's also what we, so during a PhD program, you learn what it is to be a researcher. Uh, you be, you're becoming a doctor and that's uh, so we don't expect you to know already to write a complete research proposal. Um, so it's it's about sharing the ideas that you have that there's I think there's about a thousand um, about 300 words for that or something that you can use to, to describe your idea for a research uh, topic, but it doesn't need to be a proposal yet. And well, if you will be selected for an interview, you can elaborate a bit further on it uh, together with the uh, proposed supervisor. And once you will be selected, then 
you will work on the research proposal or the research plan uh, together with your supervisor. Uh, question, is the, the, the remuneration enough to cover the family expenses until uh, the, the spouse gets employment? Well, um, remuneration is according to the, the, the Dutch uh, labor agreement and uh, the compensation sch scheme uh, which I presented. And uh, well, that are quite attractive uh, working conditions. Um, but again, well, it depends on someone's personal situation if, well, if this is enough. But you really have to keep in mind that, uh, well, uh, living in the Netherlands is not cheap. Um, uh, prices uh, for housing are quite uh, expensive. Um, but, well, it, it, it should be enough. Yes. Um, question about uh, CGPA again. So, for instance, if you have uh, a four out of four rate, um, great. How should you uh, convert it? So, uh, a four out of four is 100%. So, if you have two out of four, that's 50%. If you have three out of four, that's 75%. It's, it's that simple. It's really recalculating uh your number into a percentage and then about uh, if your master thesis is um, not in english um, but you do have an article that hasn't been published yet um, so we would like to see the type of work that you've been doing um, so if you have your master thesis in french or or in the local language that's fine submit that uh, but also, if you have a draft uh, uh, article already or a thesis, uh, submit that under the publications. Uh, so there's an op option to upload three publications, two peer-reviewed and one generic, and then choose one of those. Um, you can upload a PDF there and then uh, just make sure that in the heading of uh, of that article that you write draft unpublished something like that so that we know the status of that publication yeah then i see a lot of questions i think we answered already uh, are we expected to upload a transcript of results and um only the diploma or the final transcript of grades that's a good point yeah you should upload the diploma <laughs> definitely um but there was a question about um uh, whether the final transcript should be included there as well because this was not in an english language diploma so by default it's a diploma and the grade list and then if you have a transcript, do all three. So then you do the diploma, the transcript, and the grads. But always a diploma as well. Okay. Explain. You're scrolling uh, through yeah. the questions again. So. so there's a question about what do we mean exactly by education excellence? So you look at the grade, the final grade. Yes, we do that. And so please have a look at the uh, guide for applicants. So we have a paragraph on that. So what there's, there's a couple of sub bullets that we have in, um, uh, in that subsection. We also look at extracurricular activities, uh, the, the master thesis that you worked on, so that there's several um, elements part of the excellence of, um, of uh, education. So some people already have uh, publications uh, that they worked on during their master thesis. So, so these are the types of um, collective um, uh, at excellent that we are looking at 
uh, in this uh, in this domain. And then I see a question: Is there an age limit? Uh, well, actually, there is. There's not not an age age limit as long as you comply with the eligibility criteria. Uh, and one of them is uh, well, you should have obtained your uh, your uh, the, the diploma, your degree to embark to a doctoral program in the Netherlands less than ten years prior to the recruitment uh, deadline. application deadline. Sorry. Maybe just to clarify, we will uh, share this recording um, via the website, uh, but we will also send an after mail to everyone who registered for the um, uh, for the uh, webinar. So we have all of your email addresses. I see a question about the remuneration presented in the webinar is lower than stated in the application guide. I think uh, the, the, the gross uh, uh, salaries are the same, but uh, well, in the application guide, I indicated uh, also the net salary. Uh, well, that's a bit less than the gross salary, because in the net salary, the, the, the text is uh, deducted from the gross salary. Um, I see a question about merit. Uh, so there's the option in the form. Uh, if you have an extra merit or something special um, uh, in your master program uh, next to your diploma, uh, there's an op there's free text uh, options available uh, to share all sorts of merits or cum laude, something like that, uh, with honors. If you have something like that, you can type that just uh, with your diploma so that we know of it. Okay, and then another question. Well, if you have two masters, uh, for example, one in natural sciences and one in social sciences, is it possible to apply in two different fields? Yes, yes. OK, but you can only be selected by one. Yes. So so you can say, OK, I want to work either in this physics department with this supervisor or I'm going to work in the economics department uh, in, in Erasmus. So these are then the two supervisors that, that you're choosing. That's fine. Uh, but in the end, you will only uh, be selected for one group. And uh, I must say it's great if you can combine uh, to backgrounds into a project like this. So it's, it's really an asset to, to have an understanding of two fields. Um, so that's, uh, that's great. Um, oh, there's a question about, uh, do we have to upload only the master's degree diploma or the bachelor's and master's together? So there's different options in the form. So you can upload your bachelor program in one place and your master or even second master in another place. Um, so, um, and please do all of them in the specific questions. And there's another question. What's the condition for someone who did research internship in the Netherlands with the research institutes? Um, well, that's, that's great, of course, as long as you, uh, uh, well, as long as you did not uh, worked or lived more than one year in the Netherlands uh, in the past three years. So you really need to comply with that eligibility criteria. So there's a question, will a selected candidate be fully funded by GROW or the selected research group will complement the funding of successful candidates? Yeah, so uh, you've seen, so it's a, it is a co-fund program. Um, so how it works is that uh, all of the participating universities, they pay for sort of half of the program and the European Commission or the European Union, they pay for the other half. So it's sort of 50-50. Um, 
It depends, it depends a bit per university, it differs a bit, but that's sort of how it works. Uh, but you will not feel anything of that. Um, you are employed by the university and they will pay for your salary and the research costs, uh, etc. That's uh, the commitment of all of the research groups. Uh, so all of the researchers um, are funded just by the university and in the back office of each university, uh, there's some money being shifted around and um, coming in from the European Commission uh, that we will make sure is there at all of the research groups that have a uh, grow fellow. There's no limit on how old the reference letter should be. Uh, but as I, as I said before, um, the stronger the recommendation letter, so the better it matches with the, um, the specific program that we are working on now, uh, the, the better you will be reviewed on that specific topic. So if your recommendation letter is five years old, um, it, it will not be as strong as someone who has a recommendation letter specifically specifically written for GROW last year, or sorry, last month, uh, because you are working on this proposal. Uh, so it's uh, that is up to you how you look at that, but we don't have a timeline for that or, or a limit. Then I see another type of question, who pays for travel costs? Um, flights, that kind of things. Um, well, when you're, you are in the program, you will make a research plan together with your supervisor and uh, a detail, more, more or less detailed budget is also part of that, uh, well, that, that plan. Uh, well, if you travel for an internship or for a conference visit, uh, well, then it will be paid for. Um, if you travel for personal reasons, um, well, then you have to pay uh, for it by yourself. Um, and, uh, well, to, to come to the Netherlands uh, for your work, um, well, that, that has to be seen on a case-by-case -case basis. basis. Uh, but, but most of the time, uh, well, you have to pay for that by yourself. Um, I see a question about the list of supervisors, and I've seen it before. Um, can we choose other supervisors than the ones in the list? Uh, no, <laughs> that's quite clear. Uh, so you need to find someone of your interest in the list or not. Uh, so there's no option to include other um, researchers. And also there's a the question about, um, I have a specific master. Um, can I apply for the growth scholarship? So that's it's good to, to mention a bit about the different types of master diplo diploma. So typically at the Dutch universities, you need to, and especially the included groups, you need to have a master of arts or a master of science or an LLM uh, for, for the legal domain. Um, and other master programs are possible, um, but if you are in doubt, then um, there's a couple of Dutch university, such, uh, there's a couple of Dutch education websites where you can find more information about um, uh, the, the Dutch diplomas in an international setting. Um, and also, you can reach out for such a specific question to the supervisor of choice. So, this could be a very good question to ask them. As I was saying, a very concrete question. Hello, I'm doing this and this, and I'm, I want to apply for the GROW um, uh, fellowship program. I have this master degree from this university. Would that be eligible to become a PhD student in your group? And typically, the supervisors will know that quite easily. 
So uh, that would be a good question to ask. And keep in mind, so you need to have a master diploma to, to enroll in a Dutch university uh, for the PhD program. And also it needs to be a master program that prepares you for more say research oriented work. So that's why we say a master of science or a master of arts or an, an LLM pro, uh, that, that gives you the basis to engage in a reach research oriented program. There's a couple of programs, master programs that are more practice oriented and it will be more difficult to enroll with such a master program. And it's good to keep that in mind. Um, and also for, an, for instance, an MBA program, you need to build the extra case. So um, it can be done, definitely, but you need to um, have, have, for instance, also be cum laude or have a good professional experience already that, that strengthens your case. Okay, then I see another question about how many applications we will select from different disciplines. Um, well, in the selection process, uh, there's well in the application process, there's no no limit. We well, can uh, apply. You can uh, there will be well, no limit for number of uh, applications in total. Um, but well, we will. There are some steps in the selection process, and we will make a pre-selection until uh, uh, seven applications uh, per position. Uh, well, and there are fifty-one positions, so there will be three hundred fifty and a few uh, on for the second round, for the second review round. Um, so there's no. No, no limit for that. But in the selection process, we will we will have this. Uh, well, this we will make this limitation. Um, and maybe to it's a really different question. Um, yeah, no, now first, uh, must your research interest for your PhD project be in the same field as your master's degree in diploma? Well, let me say to a certain extent. Um, to give one example, there was a PhD defense here last Friday, and there was uh, someone who was trained as a medical doctor in Nigeria, but she now worked during her PhD for four years, much more in uh, stakeholder engagements and developing new diagnostic instruments together with the department for industrial design here, but also working with the medical center and also working with a company who was bringing this diagnostic device to the market. So with her medical background, uh, she was, um, uh, she had a very, very good background for this project, but she invested a lot in also including now the stakeholder engagement from an industrial design point of view. So I think should what what this says is you need to have a relevant background for the project that you want to work on and you need to be eligible to enroll into uh, the graduate school uh, but you can diverge a bit so it's um, because it's also interdisciplinarity but that we want to work on you can move to a different field but i would say not too far and not too stretch Uh, the the two-minute um, movie is a question about what should be in the two-minute movie. Um, we ask this to get to know you a bit better. So uh, don't, don't make a complete uh, Hollywood type of movie out of this. Um, we just want to, to hear you talking, to, to hear what your vision is, what your motivation is, uh, who you are. Uh, that's what we want to see, so that we get a bit of an impression of who are we dealing with in this. So we have a lot of paper, we have a lot of evidence, um, and uh, the, the master diploma, but who is this person? Uh, that's what we have an interest in. Um, so share a bit about why you want to engage 
in this project, what motivates you um, and, and why you think you would be um, a good candidate. So these are the types of questions we would like to be answered in this movie. I think we're getting a bit to the end. Yes, yes. I think we, yes, have answered most questions for now. Um, well, we see a lot of uh, duplications in the questions, so, well, we can, we can talk for hours. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah and I think what, so there's a lot of specific questions about the specific case for you yourself. And um, please have a look at the, um, uh, the answers that we gave. And also the uh, again the the guide of applicants uh, that's available on the website. Uh, we will update the, the frequently asked questions as well with the, all the questions that uh, that we received now. And if you still have questions after that, uh, feel free to send us an email. Uh, you know the email address, um, and uh, we will do our best to uh, to answer your specific cases if they are. Uh, really different than than the default that uh, that's available for everyone. Um, I think with that we uh, we will wrap it up. Uh, we will send we will share the link to the recording with all of you, and um, uh, we hope we answered a lot of your questions. And we are really looking forward to uh, to seeing all of your applications coming in. It's uh, really a pleasure of, of meeting all of you. Uh, and we hope to stay connected, even if you don't get selected in the end. So that's also why we will share the, um, uh, the LinkedIn group, uh, because we really believe that we are building also our community here of, of people that with an interest in, in the type of work that we are engaging in together. And who knows, there will be another opportunity to um, uh, to work together then in another project or in, maybe in another call next yeah. year future. in the future. So, uh, but for now, uh, all the best with making the best application that you can think of. And um, I think that's, um, that was it for today. That was it for today, I think. So, okay. yeah. Thanks for attending. Thank you. Bye. Bye.